Uh, the Amprobe, uh, this particular model, the uh, AM140A, is in their uh, Precision DMM line. Uh, it comes with a true RMS uh, capability. It has optically isolated uh, PC interface compatibility, a bunch of different um, measurement uh, modes. You have a data hold, a relative uh, zero mode. Uh, one thing I really like, because uh, I like to play around with audio, it has a, a DBM uh, reading capability and you can select up to 20 different impedances. Uh, there's a backlit display and it has a, what they classify as a high speed um, analog bar graph and diode testing. Uh, it can also measure capacitance and frequency. So some of the uh, pretty much uh, stock things. I purchased it for around $170. Taking a look at the uh, probes that come with it, um, they're right here. Uh, they have sharp tips on them, uh, insulated around the uh, metal probe portion there. I don't believe these caps are removable. It almost looks like a heat shrink material or molded plastic. Um, the end strain relief is quite flexible uh, for both probes. Fit in hand pretty well. Um, and the cabling is uh, decent. It's a Cat 3, Cat 4 rated uh, probe. I kind of prefer the uh, Fluke uh, TL-71s. Uh, here would be an example of the TL-71. You can see it's a little bit larger. It has uh, the exposed metal here. Uh, you can get a couple of other amp Amprobe uh, probes that are available as an option or accessory. And this cabling of the uh, silicon is just a little bit nicer. It doesn't kink quite as much. But I would say these are very decent probes, uh, nice quality. Uh, since I own about three sets of these, I usually use the uh, Fluke on all my multimeters. Okay, taking a basic look at the uh, structure of the case and everything, it has an integrated um, rubber uh, grip around here. It has some uh, ribs on it for, uh, so that you can hold it real easy. It's sort of hourglass shaped. As you can see it sort of curves in here in the center. Uh, so it fits in the palm of the hand really easy. You can put your thumb in different places. It's a good grip. Doesn't seem to be much flexing in the case at all. Uh, don't see any of that. And on the back of it, it does have a, a bail, tilt bail that comes out, and a belt clip. These two screws, you can take this off and the bail can be removed from the belt clip. So if you don't want the bail and just have it to go into a, uh, your belt or something, you can hook this back on. Um, there is um, opto-isolated for the uh, interface. Uh, to the computer. That is an option. I do have it, so I'll be talking about that a little bit later. As uh, two areas to uh, store your probes. The plastics here seem really good. Lettering, everything, silk screen looks nice. The uh, buttons uh, are good feel to them, rubbered. Uh, you have two off positions in the mode selector switch and uh, has a very positive feel to it. Snaps on through. Uh, seems to be real nice. Uh, probably uh, the best I've ever seen is uh, on the flukes. I think I like theirs a little bit better, but this does feel very positive. It does extend above the, uh, the case, the outer case, so that might be a consideration. Uh, so it's not recessed into the front panel there. Okay, uh, turning the unit on, flip the switch here, and um, the display seems to be very crisp and uh, easy to read. I did notice at a slight angle um, the analog uh, bar graph uh, is a little bit small. You can barely make out. There's a small tick mark right there and it's kind of difficult to see. If you tilt it up, you can see it a little bit better. Uh, I would have preferred this to be a little bit larger. Um, it is quite responsive though, so that's a, a plus on it. This also comes, there's a bit higher model of this one, uh, the AM160A. It has uh, tighter tolerances and some temperature uh, capabilities. Uh, but it was, at least for me, noticeably more expensive. Uh, all my Devices that I'm reviewing, I've personally purchased them, so I own each one and don't have any affiliation with any of these companies. Darn it. <laughs> um, so again, you can kind of set this up, see the, the quality. It's a 50,000 count uh, meter, uh, so that's uh, very nice. And in some of the different modes, it even has a um, 500,000 count. So you can get some pretty good resolutions on this. Uh, and uh, you can see that your uh, voltage up here uh, you can use a select button to pick between the different choices on here. Take a little closer look around the meter. Um, you can see we have our interconnections right here, our recessed banana jacks. Uh, you have ohm, volts, and capacitance. Again, it's rated for uh, CAT3 and CAT4. Uh, Common course here, 
Um, we do have uh, the milliamp and the amp ranges are both fused internally. Uh, one with a 10 amp uh, HBC fuse and a 0.5 amp uh, HBC fuse. And we can take a look at those. Uh, we can open up the unit. It also has an uh, audible warning and visual warning uh, for if you're plugging these things in on the wrong scale. So that's a nice feature that it can detect that. Again, as mentioned, the rotary switch, you have uh, your DBM and your AC volts, DC, uh, millivolts, um, frequency, uh, duty cycle, percentages, diode test, uh, continuity test plus the ohm scale, capacitance, which doesn't really excite me on a meter like this. I'd prefer you to uh, LCR bridge or something. And you have your uh, milliamps. It does have microamps, so it's nice that you have the millivolts and the microamps for extended ranges. And again, on off. It also has a, a current loop uh, capability for measuring. Okay, let's take a look at the um, resolution of the meter and uh, possibly the accuracy using a um, inexpensive calibration source. Uh, this one generates um, AC and DC current voltages and has some uh, precision resistors on the side for measuring the ohms. We'll connect this up. The jacks feel very forceful going in there, nice and tight. And you can see we've got our range up here. Turn the power on. Um, this has been calibrated at 70 degrees C. Um, I'm in California. Yesterday it was 97. So uh, right now the temperature at least of the boards around 73 degrees. So reasonably close. And they're saying the reference out um, four digits, uh, it's 5.0000 volts. So we'll take a look at it. The plus is on this side, minus is on this side. And we can see it's 5.000 and the last digit, you know, plus or minus one count error. Uh, it's rated at 0 0.03 percent uh, plus two digits. So obviously well within spec there. Um, on this particular range and on several other ranges, uh, it was running at 50,000 count. You can push this button and go to 500,000 uh, count. And you pick up an extra digit. And you can see that we're uh, point zero, or excuse me, 5.0002. Uh, and it's uh, drifting a little bit, so we're actually picking it up. Still pretty decent on that. So we can also measure the current. Uh, I'm going to leave it on the volts range here, move the probe over so you can see what happens. And we're trying to get ready to measure current, but we're on a voltage scale, so it's giving us an air warning that our mode and our connections aren't agreeing. So we'll go over to the milliamp range. And this is uh, rated at, um, from the data sheet as 0 0.9999 milliamps. So we connect those up. And we read uh, 0 0.999 milliamps. And plus or minus, again, one count. It's rated at 0.15% uh, plus 20 digits. So seems to be pretty much spot on on those two measurements. Uh, moving this back and checking uh, the AC range. And this uh, little calibrator does have AC and DC capability. It's uh, supposed to be 4.999 volts. And it's um, 5.0081. Uh, still within spec. It, uh, the spec actually improves at, say, uh, for again, in North America, we're 60 cycles for our power. And um, my understanding is this is a um, actually a 100 hertz square wave out uh, to simulate the uh, true RMS capability. And we take a, lot, a closer look at that in a few minutes. So it's a function of also what frequency you're operating at, which is very important if you're considering the DBM. Uh, you like to, especially if you're dealing with audio, uh, you'd like to work within, um, you know, a good frequency range. We can also um, check the duty cycle of that, and you notice it's got the um, the yellow right here. So you press the select button to get duty cycle, and this one's supposed to be around 50% duty cycle, and we can see the duty cycle of the uh, waveform that's going into it is 49.98. Uh, 
and according again to the uh, calibration data sheet it is supposed to be 50 percent so again uh, very very close uh, and you can also measure uh, the frequency of the wave and as I indicated I believe it's supposed to be 100 Hertz and whoops slipped off there a little bit and we have 99.996 uh, Hertz uh, checking the uh, ohmic ranges we can go over here again with the auto ranging don't need power to measure resistance turn around we have some different resistors here um, and just pick one here one, this is a 1k and it's supposed to be 1.0002 and it's 1.0001 and again the last digit may toggle uh, it's 0.1 percent precision of accuracy for this meter um, plus two counts so very reasonable and here's 10k a 10k is supposed to be 9.999 and this is a 9.996 so again uh, very tight uh, tolerances so looks looks good also gives you an idea of the auto ranging there where it um, the overload or over level and um, we can watch it cycle through if I pick especially down at 100 ohms you can kind of see how quickly it finds that oops I slipped off let's try that one more time there we go so reasonably fast not too bad and this is supposed to be a hundred point one two and it's a hundred Point one one again bouncing around at least significant digit. Do have um, continuity capability by pressing the select button, and you can tap it through and it sounds reasonably terrible, not very good, kind of quick. Uh, it'd be interesting to see uh, switching the probes over to the uh, flukes, see if they're finished a little bit more. Again, like I mentioned, the probes are very sharp though, possibly even sharper than the flukes. So biting the oxides and things like that probably works real well so uh, let's pop over to the uh, fluke probe just for a comparison so here we have the uh, fluke probes uh, doing the same continuity test notice how much cleaner it is reasonably quick reasonably fast and uh, not too bad now on the sound again I as I mentioned I like these probes I'm going to use these the rest of the way simply because um, I can simply slip on a alligator clip real easy to it so it makes it convenient I got uh, like I said about three sets of these off of uh, eBay for a really great price so I was really happy with it and they're also cat 3 and cat 4 rated so same specifications